There are a good many people, uh, specialists in the field, as you know, who believe that language is simply a matter of, of training, that, mm. uh, that a child can be trained to speak and that uh, there's nothing unique about this. Mm. You, I know, feel that there's something more than simply training. Mm. Why do you feel that there's something more to learning language than simply training? Well, first of all, it's, it's worth mentioning that most overwhelmingly people learn language without training. I mean, if you simply immerse a child in a situation in which language is spoken, he acquires this system. But, it, and, but it's more than a response to the stimuli of must the person be, around him speaking? Well, well, the, the, the most obvious and sort of gross fact about language which shows that, I think, is the uh, innovative, creative character of it. I mean, every child is capable of uh, understanding and producing very complex structures which have no simple relationship, no point-by-point -point relationship, no... Uh, no, no relationship on the basis of analogy, let's say, to the experience that he's presented. The generative, creative structures of language. Uh, Just that, that you can, as we're talking, we say new things, which we may not have said before. We hear new things. I mean, language is, well, as before. we talk, there's very little repetition in, in what we say. Well, if you really were to, to see how little repetition there is, you can, let's say, take a, a book or a newspaper or a library, for that matter, mm -hmm. and search for repetitions of phrases or sentences and so on. They, re they occur, but rarely so. I mean, there are particular subparts of language, say re uh, greetings or uh, conventional utterances of one sort or another, that do repeat frequently. But these are, incidentally, often marginal in their structure. For example, a, a sentence like, how do you do, has a structure which is, in fact, unique. It's not the structure of any English sentence. Uh, that, and we don't create new sentences of that type. That's just a ritualized utterance. Yeah. But most of our linguistic interchange is, in fact, highly innovative. And, of course, it's not just random. I mean, it's innovative, but somehow appropriate to situations. It doesn't necessarily follow the rules that we were all taught in school of a subject and a predicate or a noun and a verb. Yeah. I mean, I would have the impression that somehow in my schooling, I was taught to do what it is that I do now. Yeah, well, people have that impression, but the reason is that the actual rules of language, which certainly are not taught in school, because in fact nobody even knows them to this day, uh, are totally unconscious. I mean, what you're taught in school is some relatively superficial set of generalizations about some of the products. Of are they important? Is it important to know that? Well, I think it'd be important to know it, but the, the point that has to be stressed is that one, first of all, that everyone knows, you know, speaks a language very fluently and a very rich language before he ever goes to school. And furthermore, even if you wanted to teach somebody the rules of language, you wouldn't be able to do it because the rules are largely unknown. We're just barely beginning to uh, discover them. It, it seems to us that there's no problem in speaking, just as it seems to us that there's no problem in, let's say, walking. But if we were tr to try to design an automaton, let's say, that would uh, walk or ride a bicycle or uh, identify a person. I mean, for example, if you look at me from one point of view and if I turn my face, you could still recognize me. Yeah. That's not so easy to do. I mean, we can do it because we have some special unknown capacities for perceptual okay. identification. Well, in the case of language, too, we have this whole totally unconscious set of intricate mechanisms. I mean, something's built into the, to the system? Well, I have no doubt that... Uh, most of the richness of the structure of language is just the biological property of the organism. Can't be can't be taught any more than you can be taught to have two but arms gotten, and two you, legs. You've got no way that you can X-ray it or or well put uh, your finger on it. At the moment, uh, neurophysiology is not in a state where one can detect the physical structures that underlie linguistic use. I mean, only rather gross things are known. For example, it's known that. Uh, that uh, language is uh, controlled by the dominant, that the, the brain has two hemispheres and language is controlled by one dominant hemisphere. Incidentally, humans are, as far as I know, as far as anyone knows, the only organism that has lateralization, that has specialization of the two hemispheres. Mm -hmm. Apes don't, for example. And this is, as is well known, this is closely connected with yeah. language. That, and, uh, you know, areas of the brain are known that have special relevance to various language functions. But when you get into the detailed, intricate structure of the system, it's still a mystery, entire mystery. One might say the same about learning. Nobody knows anything about the neurology of learning either for that yeah. matter. Now, one of the most controversial things that you've come up with is the fact that what you're saying is true not only of English, but true of all languages. There's a commonality that runs through all languages. I would have guessed that some hmm. languages were so rigidly structured that if you learned a set of 20 rules, it would take care of all hmm. situations. Well, uh, see, if, if what I just said before is true, that is, if a great deal of the structure of language is just a biological property, 
that you bring to the learning situation, not something that you acquire in it. And if we further assume, as is unquestionably the case, that humans are not specifically adapted to learn one language or another, that is, there's no racial difference that makes it easier for you to learn this language or that language or something of that sort. From those two assumptions alone, it follows that all languages are going to be essentially uniform in that part of their structure, which is biologically determined, uh, just as there's a, there are only going to be certain possible limitations in, in the kind of gait that you can use when you walk. And you can't fly, you know, uh, no human beings going to fly, we're all going to walk. We may walk in slightly different ways, and these may be culturally determined in part and so on. Well, in a, I don't want to press the analogy too yeah. far. There's more differentiation in language than that. But still, I think that there is simply a biologically determined uh, rich framework, which we can learn a lot about, incidentally. I think we can find out a good deal about it, and there are interesting theories about it that predispose us to acquire a system of great complexity of a very specific sort on the basis of a very slight familiarity, a very slight exposure to data. See, one of the most remarkable things about acquisition of language is that uh, we, the, the child, or for that matter an adult, has had very few seconds in his lifetime, and, very, and the uh, total range of data available to him is rather small as compared with, the, with his ability to express himself and mm -hmm. to uh, produce and understand uh, 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 sentences and utterances and discourses as he does in his normal life. And that again indicates that uh, that there's a rich biologically determined structure which therefore must be uniform across languages. Yeah. Now, as far uh, to get back to your original point, uh, you know, whether there are languages with a small number of rules that would suffice to explain everything, certainly nothing of that sort is known. I mean, yeah. insofar as languages have been carefully studied, living languages at least, they seem uh, Basically, to, they, they do differ. I mean, you know, one language is not another language, but uh, they, they don't differ, differ as far as we know. There's still this creative complexity. aspect in all languages. Well, that, that is oh, that's absolutely universal. That's yeah. just a human property, I mean, yeah. which is true of every language. 